Hello. Welcome to this lecture on modal superposition. This lecture is part of the course Dynamics and Control of Mechanical Systems. Let's consider the free vibrations of an undamped linear time invariant system. The equations of motion of this system is what you see on the screen, so simply mass times acceleration plus stiffness times displacement is equal to zero. So zero indicates that there are no forces acting on the system and that's why we call it free vibrations. And bear in mind that the mass matrix is a symmetric positive definite matrix and the stiffness matrix is also a symmetric positive definite matrix. We are interested in finding the response to initial conditions. So what we do is give a perturbation at time zero. So we say Q at time zero has certain values and Q dot at time zero has certain values as well. And based on this, we determine the solution to the equation, which is the column of generalized coordinates Q. To apply modal superposition, to define modal superposition, we need to recall that we solve the eigenvalue problem to obtain the eigenfrequencies of the system and the corresponding eigenmodes. Modal superposition says that we can write the generalized coordinates Q as a sum of some factors, the scalar functions that depend on time, multiplied by the eigenvectors. So, and these etas, eta1, eta2, etc., are what we call modal coordinates. This sum you see here can be written in matrix uh, column form if we put the eigenvectors in columns in one matrix and we put the modal coordinates in one column here. And to make it even more compact, we can write the modal matrix simply as capital U. And this multiplied by the column of etas will give us the generalized coordinates. The interesting thing to think about then is what the consequence of modal superposition is for our equations of motion. So if we take Q is U times eta, and then Q double dot is U times eta double dot, and we substitute them into the equations of motion, we find the following. Here there is nothing surprising. And this expression here, we can pre-multiply it with U transpose. We do that here, yeah? so, and if you recall, the lecture on orthogonality, this should ring a bell. So we, we see here U transposed MU and U transposed KU. So if you remember, these two are diagonal matrices, right? So U transposed MU is a diagonal matrix with the modal mass factors in the diagonal and U transposed KU is a diagonal matrix with the modal stiffness factors in the diagonal. The consequence of this is that we end up having n uncoupled equations. So we go from a situation where we had n coupled equations to n independent equations. And this can be seen more clearly in the next slide. So this matrix expression can be written also in the following way. Simply writing each of the equations separately. So this is what we get. We get n equations of one degree of freedom. So uh, mass times acceleration plus stiffness times displacement uh, is zero. And then if we take the mass out, and remember that kr divided by mr is omega r squared, we end up having here eta double dot r plus omega squared uh, times eta. That should be zero. So this is the equation 
we need to solve. So basically what this tells us is that we have gone from a system of equations, uh, which is size n times n, to n independent one degree of freedom equations that we can solve independently. And in fact, all of you can solve this equation by hand. You, you know the solution. So the solution for this equation is as follows. If omega r is zero, then we simply have an integration constant plus another integration constant times t, with t being the time. And if omega r is not zero, we get a harmonic motion. So we get that eta is some constant times cosinus omega r rt plus another constant times sinus omega r t. The question is now, how does this work in practice? So let us look into this with the half car example. In the half car model, we have two modes. We have uh, mode one uh, and we have mode two with uh, certain frequencies which are not zero. So for each of the modes, we can write one of these differential equations with omega squared here. So the, basically, as you see here, the only parameter we need to know in order to solve this equation is what is the eigenfrequency of the mode. And the same holds here. And when, once we have solved this, so we solve for eta one and we solve for eta two, we simply have to combine them by multiplying them by the eigenmodes to obtain the generalized coordinates. But of course, we need some initial conditions. So let's go to the next slide. Again, as, as I said, we have two separate independent differential equations. And the solutions to each of these equations look like this. Uh, they are harmonic solutions with a cosinus term and a sinus term. And as I said, we need initial conditions to obtain these coefficients. So let us take initial conditions. Q at time zero is 0 0.10 and Q dot is zero. What does this initial condition mean? It means we are giving point P here an initial displacement 0.1 meters. So we lift it to 0.1 meters at time is zero, and then we let loose. And the question is, what will be the response of the system? Or in other words, what are these constants? So the first thing we need to do is obtain eta one at time is zero and eta two at time is zero. And we can get it from the model superposition expressions. So we know that q at zero is a combination of eta one at zero and eta two at zero, and the same holds for q dot with respect to eta dot, eta dot one, eta dot two. So if we solve this system of equations, we obtain that eta one at zero is 0 0.05 and eta two at zero is minus 0 0.05 and eta dot r zero. And if we substitute this in the equations above, we finally get the integration constants with b11 0.05 and b21 minus 0.05 and the other two constants are zero. Summarizing, this leads to the following solutions. Eta1 is simply 0.05 cosinus omega 1t and eta2 is minus 0.05 cosinus omega 2t. And the last thing we need to do is combine these two to obtain the generalized coordinates. So the solution is to say Q is U1 times eta1 plus U2 times eta2. U1 and U2, we know them. So in the end, we end up having these expressions. So, so 0 0.05 times cosinus omega 1t plus 0 0.05 times cosinus omega 2t for the displacement of point P. And for the other point here, which was point Q, if you recall, it's the same thing, but with a minus sign there. So if you want to see how this system moves in time, just plot these functions in MATLAB, and then you will see what this means. I would like to give you a question to think about, because what would be the response if the initial conditions 
are this, 0.1, 0.1. So we give both ends of the mass an initial displacement of 0.1 and then we let loose. What will, what will be the solution we get here? Think about it. But, in general, we will not be looking into free response, but we will look into forced response of a system. So in the forced response, we have a generalized force acting on the right-hand side. And here, we can again apply modal superposition and we can substitute Q in the equation, pre-multiply with U transpose, the same thing we did before. And we have something new here because U transpose times capital Q is what we call capital N, and these are the modal forces. So you could see this as the projection of the generalized forces on the modes. Those are the modal forces. So basically the contribution of the force to a given mode. And to write it as uncoupled equations, we end up having an expression like this. So modal mass uh, multiplying eta double dot plus omega r squared eta r. And this should be equal to the modal, ma modal force. So, so as we as said we before, say, we before, get a set we get a set of uncoupled ordinary, ordinary differential equations ordinary. and we have as many equations as degrees of freedom and if we solve these equations then we can recover the generalized coordinates from the modal superposition expression the interesting thing here is to think about how these modal forces affect the, the response of the system we will look into that when we consider the frequency response of the system. Thanks for watching and see you next time.